name is Jeff Hain. Things I care deeply about would be my family. My wife and my two boys are, are pretty much my whole world. My pets and my parents and uh, my brother and sister, my nieces and nephews. After all of that, I really like my job. My job is licensing film and television rights to distribute those films and television shows on all forms of distribution. So the company, when I first started, obviously we were focused mainly on DVD and then that became DVD and Blu-ray and now Amazon Prime, Netflix, Hulu, you know, Showtime stars, HBO Max, all those things. So I'm the senior vice president of acquisitions and productions because we also produce content. So we produce documentary series and wrote documentary feature films. Before my injury, I was in college. I was 21 years old. I had turned 21 on June 18th of 2000 and was surrounded by friends. That summer, I had decided to stop doing theater for one summer because typically during the summers, I was a part of a repertory theater company. Um, so I was working at a restaurant, doing bartending at the restaurant, and I loved it. I was hurt in the end of June, beginning of July of 2000 in a single vehicle car accident, middle of nowhere, driving my car uh, home from fishing with a friend. And long story short is that um, it took a, about a day and a half for anyone to find me. I was in the middle of nowhere, rolled the vehicle a few times, and it ejected me. But the good news was that in the time that it took them to find me, you know, I spent, you know, 24, 36 hours or whatever it was being really, really happy that I was alive. Of course, the, the first couple hours are, are probably the same thing everyone feels, which is like that shock and terror, the a realization that you can't feel things that you used to be able to feel, you know, all those things happen as well. But instead of being rushed to the hospital and going through those things on the way to the hospital and in front of a million people, I went through all that by myself and came to the conclusion that I was really pleased to not be dead on a Tuesday in South Dakota. And it was probably, you know, mid-afternoon that next day when I hear a truck come to a stop up at the top of the hill and a farmer comes walking down the hill. He had seen something shiny in the ravine, thought it was a hubcap he lost, but I croaked out help. And he disappeared. And, you know, five minutes later, lights and sirens and cops and police officers and hospitals and crying family members and all of it began. This was July and I was back in college the second week of September. So I went through surgery and everything like that to put, you know, rods in my back. I'm a T6 paraplegic. Craig Hospital is where I went for rehab for like three and a half, four weeks. Graduated from college, obviously, was something that was a huge priority to me in life. But getting paralyzed, you know, right before my senior year was not something that you know, obviously could plan for. But I wasn't going to let it stop me. You know what I mean? I was like, I was like, no way. As part of a school project, my senior year of college, I, I created a public speaking internship for myself. And I went to second and third grade classrooms and I spoke to kids about disabilities and self-esteem and you know, being yourself and, and you know, loving yourself no matter what that package is. And it was really good for me. It was therapeutic, you know, who knew that, you know, these kids asking a million questions at the end of my presentation would kind of get rid of a lot of the hangups and barriers that I was still carrying around. At the end of that, uh, there was a newspaper article about it that was in the Sioux Falls Argus Leader, which is the big newspaper in Sioux Falls. And um, the owner of a record label out in LA read the article. And turns out that he graduated from South Dakota State, where I graduated from college. And he called the Alumni Foundation. They just gave him my phone number. <laughs> and like it was like that crazy phone call that no one expects. Where it was like, you know, I work for a record label in Los Angeles. I'd like to hire you. You know, and it was like, why? But he read the article and he was kind of inspired. And so nine months post-injury, I moved out to Los Angeles by myself. Could not find an accessible place to live. So I found sort of an accessible hotel room at Motel 6 in Newberry Park. Funny thing is, is that, you know, I started my job for BCI Eclipse, Brentwood Home Video out in LA. It was, it was a perfect fit that I didn't know I was looking for. In the sense that I always wanted to work in entertainment. I worked there for about a year and a half, two years. And my boss says to me, no offense, Jeff, but you're a lot better with your mouth than a spreadsheet. And I said, thank you. You know, like, are you, is that a compliment? And uh, he said, he ensured, assured me that it was a compliment and told me that I was going to be in charge of doing their film and TV licensing. And he goes, Jeff, you're, you know, you're 22, 23 years old. 
you are our prime demographic. He goes, I don't want you to go out and try to figure this out. I want you to go out and try to acquire the rights to shows that you like. So I went to my first big film show in France. And this was my first foray into international travel, of course, in, an, in a wheelchair. It was way worse than I expected. But <laughs> at the same time, after that first time, it wasn't so scary, right? And it wasn't so bad the second time. And it got way easier the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and 30th time. After my injury, um, my girlfriend Kathleen was not only my rock, but kind of my motivation. Do I feel bad for myself sometimes? Sure. But not around her. She doesn't allow me to. And it's such a gift. She's firm, right? She's smart. And she doesn't allow despair to win. I think it's pretty amazing. Um, my greatest accomplishment um, since becoming injured is becoming a dad. I have twin 10-year-old boys. As all of us who are paralyzed know, it's not easy to have kids after you're paralyzed for a variety of reasons. For, for me, having kids involved, figuring out if I still had the ability to you know, physically uh, have kids. And I found out seven years into my injury that physically it was still possible. The next, you know, six months were basically Kathleen and I trying to figure out how having kids works. We, we went through, you know, not a lot of doctor's appointments and things like that before we were successful. We were very, very lucky. Nine and a half, ten months later, you know, we had twin boys, which was a big surprise for us. And as you can imagine, there's not a day that goes by that I'm not busy helping raise kids. So I coach baseball for my son's Little League team. The other one plays lacrosse and soccer and a bunch of other stuff. But the one who plays baseball um, did real well this year, and he was selected for a postseason, what they call an all-star team. And I was a little flattered, a little honored, and a little bit terrified to be chosen as one of the coaches for the all-star team. Those are the things that I'm looking forward to. It's, it's kind of like I'm looking forward to all my boys' upcoming milestones and being a part of that. And, and my wife and I, Kathleen and I, sharing in those experiences. There are a lot of skills and experiences I would like to have. I, I still want to go skydiving. I still want to have a motorcycle because I was big into motorcycles when I got hurt and I really like to drive manual cars. So if we could figure out like a paddle shift situation for me in my next car, that'd be cool. As it pertains to the potential of walking again or goal, other goals that I have besides walking again, I, I think my, my true goal is happiness. I'm not trying to win life. I'm just trying to be happy. The goals that I have typically are, you know, making sure that my family is happy and healthy. And if they're happy and healthy, I'm pretty much happy and healthy. When I'm speaking to a new injury, which I do relatively frequently as part of the Christopher Reeve and Dana, Christopher Dana Reeve Foundation, I tell them to live their life. You know, I say, yes, you're going to have to learn to use your wheelchair. You're going to have to learn how to do a wheelie so you can jump down a curb. You're going to have to learn how to put that wheelchair in and out of your back seat. And you're going to have to get hand controls and maybe a ramp. And once you have those things, go back to doing what you do. If you hiked before, start hiking. And people say, what do you mean? You know, the answer is you can still go hiking. Half the trails that the National Park Service you know, put in the world are accessible. There are websites that will detail accessible wheelchair travel for you that you can live by. If you're someone who likes to travel, start traveling. Get back to traveling. You have to know what's right for you. You have to advocate for yourself, but go back to living your life immediately, as soon as possible.